I'm going to go ahead and make some disclaimers here right off the bat, just to cover my ass, before I begin. Disclaimer: This video is not meant to promote any form of anti-Muslim agenda. While I dislike Islam as much as I dislike any organized religion, I will be discussing the doctrine today and not those who interpret it. Disclaimer: This video is also not meant to promote any anti-religious agenda. While I myself am technically an atheist but prefer to say agnostic, I generally don't have any problem with religious people. Some of my favorite subscribers are Christians, and I harbor no ill will against them because of their spiritual beliefs. It really only seems to be when religion is taken to the extreme that things really become an issue. And this video, if anything, is meant to support that notion and no others. So with all of that in mind, I ask the question, does the Quran teach a flat earth? First, some points of interest. Islam is the youngest of the Abrahamic religions, coming from about 1400 years ago. The reason this is significant is because this means the globe earth actually predates Islam, and thus the fact that numerous flat earthers happen to be Muslim causes one to raise an eyebrow. I have in the past discussed the numerous ways that the Christian Bible can be interpreted to teach a flat earth, and the ways that it can't, but Christianity at least has the excuse of the age of its origins. Globe earth wasn't even a twinkle in Aristarchus' eye when that religion was born, so what's Islam's excuse? Well, I've yet to actually find out. I'm doing my research as I write this script. I've asked the question, and now it's time to study and find the answer. One difference Islam holds with Christianity is the rigidity of its doctrine. The Quran isn't quite the same as the Bible, which was written allegedly by witnesses to divine peoples like Jesus of Nazareth. The Quran, however, is said to be the irrefutable word of Allah, or God, from the mouth of his prophet Muhammad. Add to this the fact that it is written in Arabic, which is a language that leaves far less to interpretation than ancient Hebrew. So let's take a look at the first verse that's said to support a flat earth. Quran 2.22 he who made for you the earth a bed spread out, and the sky a ceiling, and sent down from the sky rain and brought forth thereby fruits as provision for you. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm not seeing it yet. This just sounds like poetic language to describe our everyday visual experience, which obviously is that the earth is a surface upon which we can sit, and the sky is a ceiling in that it appears to expand endlessly above us. If you're trying to imply that ceiling means firmament, I think they're fishing just a little bit. The next several quotes I found are fairly repetitive, but all boil down to a description of the earth spreading out like a carpet. Again, this sounds like descriptive language, not scientific. I expect nothing less from the Prophet, who I won't hide that I don't hold in high regard. Quran 1886 Till when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a muddy spring, and found a people thereabout. We said, whatever that is, either punish or show them kindness. Okay, now we're getting into some meat and potatoes. The article I found this in has numerous links verifying that this passage was taken by early Muslims extremely literally. They genuinely believed that a person could follow the sun to where it sets and observe it in a muddy spring. The case of the Quran is officially at a score of negative one. Moving on! Quran 2, 187 It is made lawful for you to go in unto your wives on the night of the fast. They are raiment for you, and ye are raiment for them. Allah is aware that ye were deceiving yourselves in this respect, and he hath turned in mercy toward you and relieved you. So hold intercourse with them, and seek that which Allah hath ordained for you, and eat and drink until the white thread becometh distinct to you from the black thread of the dawn. Then strictly observe the fast till nightfall, and touch them not, but be at your devotions in the mosques. These are the limits imposed by Allah, so approach them not. Thus Allah expandeth his revelation to mankind that they may ward off evil. All right, now I'm getting a little uncomfortable. This passage starts to border on the Islamic doctrine's poor treatment of women. That aside, it also seems to imply that Muhammad had no knowledge of the sun and earth orbits. For instance, how would people in certain parts of Alaska be able to follow these rituals? Hello, uh, this is Ernest. I'm making this video um, just to show and demonstrate um, how dark it is in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. I just now got done sending the uh, taking the kids to school, and as you can see, uh, street lights are on. It is dark. Um, yeah, it is uh, exactly 8:50 a.m. in Anchorage, Alaska, and this is what we see. It is very dark. 
Must they starve themselves during Ramadan for a month? I mean, come on, Prophet. Even Neolithic peoples knew about the equinoxes and solstices. Negative two now. This next bit, I think, is really a killer blow. It indicates a fundamental misunderstanding of how directions work on a globe Earth, and asks its followers to do something only possible on a flat plane. Followers of Islam are told that they must make daily prayers while facing in the direction of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Let's think about that for a second. Living in Canada, my instinct would be to turn to my east across the ocean. However, I could also turn 180 degrees, face west, and still be looking at Mecca. This further drives home my point that Muhammad was many things, but an astronomer is not one of them. You're at negative three now, and you've got one last chance to bring yourself back. They will ask thee of the mountains on that day, say, my lord will break them into scattered dust and leave it as an empty plain, wherein thou seest neither curve nor ruggedness. I just don't, nope, I've got nothing here. I mean, it's pretty clear to me now that this is not a science textbook. Islam is, like any other religious doctrine, a method of controlling large amounts of people with superstition and fear of the unknown. I don't hold these fears, so I don't subscribe to these faiths. Islam, though, has a special place in my black little heart now. Not only for the flat earth stuff, but if you want to know more about my thoughts regarding Muhammad, just read about Aisha, his third wife. She was nine, he was over 30. I'll leave it at that. Thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. As usual, my name is Kevin, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the only hope we've ever known.